Hi, welcome to another video. So today I'm going to give you a brief insight to these Honeywell timers. Another Honeywell timer, another fault central heating fault. So if I get the model, it is the ST9400C. So if you've got central heating, hot water playing up, and you've got one of these uh, timers, I'll show you what, what the problem is, or what potentially the problem is. So this belongs to my partner. I've got a, a combination boiler, but a condensing boiler as well, but this timer is fitted to a Baxi back boiler. The boiler is 28 years old, still going strong, so there's no need for her to change it. Yes, maybe a combination boiler, slightly more efficient, but you won't, a combination boiler will not last 28 years. The heat exchanger would get clogged up before then. Anyway, so the problem with this timer, or the problem with the uh, Mandy's central heating hot water, she could press the override for the hot water, the boiler would come on, just fire up, and that's it, she'd have hot water. If she tried to just have the central heating, over the last few months, sometimes the heating would come on, other times it wouldn't. If you don't turn the hot water on, turn the central heating on first, the central heating should bring on a water pump and then fire up the boiler, uh, and it wouldn't. So I did some research, couldn't find a diverter valve in the central heating system. Took this apart, I'll show you. There's a look at the inside. So what I've actually removed is a 0.68 microfarad capacitor. It sits there. So that's what the Honeywell are using to drop the mains 240 down to either 3.3 or 5 for the, this Atmel microcontroller. Uh, and they've, actually, they've got 48 volt relays, probably because they draw less current. But it doesn't make any difference. It's all running off one capacitor, and as soon as that starts to fail, there's not enough voltage to pull these in. So what I've concluded, when you turn the hot water on, it just there was enough power to pull in one of these relays to turn the boiler on, ignite the boiler, uh, and get your hot water, it's a gravity fed system. So just power to the boiler, nothing else, everything was fine. Whilst the hot water was on, if you turn the central heating on, there was sometimes enough power to bring in this second relay, but last night it was zero degrees outside, uh, we're in January 2017, there wasn't sufficient power to pull the second relay in. So the central heating pump wasn't coming in. Now on the back seat back boiler, I believe she's got the Bermuda, there's actually two heat exchangers, one for the central heating, one for the hot water, that's why there's no need for a diverter valve. If you have got a diverter valve, a two or three port valve, that's the first thing you should look at, not the electronics or motor in top. In the top, the actual valve scales up and they can jam on a hot water position, so when you want central heating, the valve physically can't swing over. So always check the diverter valves first if you've got problems with heating. If you've got a backseat back boiler, or if you've got any central heating system and you're having trouble, you need to ascertain is, is the timer, if it's a Honeywell, is the timer uh, working first. So as I say, turn the hot water on, you could hear a click, one of these would come in. Turn the central heating on, sometimes you'd hear a click in the early days and it got progressively worse over the last few months. Turn the central heating on, no click from the second relay. So it wasn't turning on the central heating pump. Now I haven't got a 0.68 microfarad capacitor. 0.68 microfarad polypropylene, 305 volts AC minimum. I've actually got two 0.33 microfarad. So I'm actually going to solder these in parallel, join the leads together and pop them in them in down there. So if I just show you. So this time is about five, six years old. And if I get this little cheap capacitor meter. Hook up the capacitor. Make sure you discharge any capacitor before testing them. Otherwise you blow up your meter. Right, so that's 0.68 microfarad. And we have 
so as I say, enough power to pull in one relay, not enough power to pull in two at once. <clears throat> so to understand more about the heating, why it's working, why it wasn't, uh, why the hot water is working, why the central heating wasn't, I'll show you, I've done a quick drawing on the computer using paint. So as I say, yeah, another Honeywell. Now I've actually developed this, it's actually a low profile. Switch mode power supply, a bit messy, I haven't cleaned this one up yet. That's low enough to sit in here under the cover. That would actually, yeah, mains 240 volts in, 5 volts out. Uh, nice slim line inverter. If I could be bothered and I had the time, I'd modify this and put one of these in, but then I'd have to change these relays to 5 volts, not 24. But so, if you're asking why they don't use switch mode power supplies, there is plenty of room, but This will cost, you know, less than a pound if you buy in thousands, and this would actually cost a few pound. So, this would bump up the cost of your timer. Anyway, onto the drawing. Right, let me pull up this paint. Right, so. Backseat uh, back boiler, dual heat exchanger, which is here. I haven't shown the expansion pipes and where it fills up with water if you've got a leak or whatever. Just kept it simple. That's the boiler. There are the flames, that's the pilot light. Power into your timer. So as I say, the SD940C and others. Most of them actually got capacitors in there, so if your timer's blown up, Take it apart, check the capacitor, or we'll get someone else to have a look at it for you. Power goes into the timer. When you demand hot water, it just turns on the boiler. Nothing else, power to the boiler. It's already got to supply your yeah, neutral and everything, so one of the relays turns on, powers up the boiler, and this is a gravity fed system. So the two heat exchangers, flame is heating up the water in this heat exchanger. The hot water rises heats the water in the tank via this coil and then the water sinks and returns back it's heated up again. So that's the hot water system. When you demand central heating all that time it does is power up a pump. Maybe I shouldn't tap the screen with a screwdriver. So that second relay powers up the pump and that second heat exchanger is pumped system for the radiator so Again, heats up the water, the pump drives the hot water out to the radiators. Hopefully that's all in view. Through the radiators and then the common return back to the boiler. And the problem with this, sometimes you'd have uh, hot water, sometimes the heating worked, so sometimes that came in, other times it didn't. Uh, if you turn the heating on by itself, you'd get nothing. There's power to turn on the pump, but no power to bring on the second relay to light up the boiler. So depending on what you requested, you get different faults. Um, so as I say, the hot water, heat exchanger, heats up the water, heats up the coil in the tank, heats up the water in the tank, and you've obviously got the hot water out to the taps, the cold fill would be at the bottom of the tank. So that's it, hopefully you're not getting too many weird effects with this camera viewing this monitor. Uh, I've got a little note down there. There's a lot of people robbing people's YouTube videos. One guy actually stole about 60 of my videos, set up his own site. He's now been closed down. So if you see this anywhere other than YouTube on my channel, it's someone else has stolen it. So that's the basics of a backseat back boiler uh, and various heating faults you can get. As I say, if you've got a Diverter valve diverts the water to hot water or central heating. That's the first thing you check. The valve can get scaled up. It can also cause a boiler to bang. Well, yeah, in this case, no diverter valves. So it took me a while. I was looking uh, yeah, through the gaps in the floorboards, looking for a valve, couldn't find one anywhere. And that's because this Paxi back boiler has a dual heat exchanger. One for the water, one for the central heating. So yeah, if you've got Honeywell, timer and it's over I don't know four or five years old 
that's the first thing to check check the supplies coming out incidentally this timer you could actually hear when you press hot water you could hear the relay click and then when you press uh, the override for the central heating in the early days you could hear the second relay come in to bring on the pump and then last night as I say zero degrees outside 20 to 12 press it no relay for the uh, central heating uh, and if you're stuck you're in the middle of nowhere and it's midnight or whatever there's a quick look at the drawing hopefully you can see it from there you've got live and neutral in plus an earth these pins there's no earth on the pins just shows you this was a simple one so live out to the boiler live out to the pump uh, in this case what I did bridged the two wires going out to the pump and to the boiler bridge them straight to live so if she wants to turn it off pulls the fuse until I've fixed this and as I say should be a 0.68 microfarad capacitor I've got two 33's gonna put those in parallel stick them on job done if I if it doesn't work or anything I'll come back to you but I guarantee it's those capacitors hopefully this has helped thank you very much